you can bank on this morning's guest being optimistic about feeling fit and looking fabulous. Meet her, coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Coastal South Carolina chapter of the American Red Cross on Pampas Drive in Myrtle Beach near the soon to open Market Common on the former Myrtle Beach Air Force Base. We're focused on feeling fit and looking fabulous and we're visiting with the Senior Vice President of South Atlantic Bank and a Herald columnist, Mary Jo Rogers. Good morning, Good Mary morning, Jo. Greg. Big title there, Senior Vice President of South Atlantic Bank. A new community bank which just opened November 28th, I believe. It did, yes. At the uh, at the corporate center. Corporate center, mm -hmm. exactly. I didn't want to say founder center. At the corporate <laughs> center, which is located where, Mary? It's Jill? on the corner of Bob Grissom Parkway and 21st Avenue in Myrtle Beach. Okay, real easy to find. Very easy to find. Just look at the baseball stadium, and we're right across the street. Yes. How? What's it like? Is it pretty exciting now? The first two weeks. Today is Friday. The 13th, 14th, yeah, 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 yeah. so two it's, weeks in. It's very exciting. We've had a lot of old friends and, and new friends come to join us and um, had a gentleman come in the other day who had been with a bank that had been purchased by a larger bank and said he liked small banks. He was a World War II veteran. He looked around our bank and said, it doesn't get much smaller than this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, he brought us a, a, a deposit and we were very happy to Great. see him. Yes. So, uh, so we're getting... Getting lots of new customers, lots that of new faces. That is faces. wonderful. So you want fun. folks to come in. You obviously need Absolutely. folks to come in. Absolutely. We need folks to come thing. in and okay. bank with us. And, and I think they'll see a lot of people they know. They'll feel very comfortable. Uh, right. You know, and uh, we have hot donuts and, and coffee every day. One oh, of our wow. shareholders is the owner now. of Krispy Kreme. So, uh, so you get hot donuts every day at South very Atlantic. Nice. So come see us. I like that benefit. Absolutely. Wow, that is very nice. That is very nice. Why go to Krispy Kreme? You can go to South That's Atlantic right. Bank. That's right. Come to South Atlantic Bank. I love it. I love it. You know, of course, for folks involved in a startup or any anything of a sort, a new community bank is just, just that. It's making a difference right here in the community. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, th I think we found that with some of the consolidations that have happened in the last couple of years, even though the world says starting a bank, are you crazy? But in Myrtle Beach, you know, we've had some opportunities. And, right. and I really think that people are looking for that hometown focus that you know, we're going to take care of our customers. We're going to we're going to make sure that they that people know their name when they walk in the door, and that they really feel good about walking into our company. And, oh, absolutely! And it, we're already seeing a difference. It just yes. it feels like home again. Wayne Gray was with us yesterday. He was with another community bank. Absolutely, I think with Tidelands, yes. With Tidelands Bank, and obviously those folks. A lot of great community banks in the area, and of course. You've got feelings for all of them. I mean, they absolutely, they are good, good corporate friends very of ours. So, very definitely, feeling fit, looking fabulous. You had a, you've had some tremendous columns. Of course, Mary Jo, you've been doing this column in the Myrtle Beach Herald, our show sponsor absolutely. for three probably, years, almost three years now, mm -hmm. or more than three years. Wow, yeah. wow, what's that been like? As you've seen, 156 pieces uh, come off your either fingers typing or writing them out. How do you go, go about preparing for a column each week? Well, I've run out of ideas. I can tell oh, you that no, I no, struggle. No, yeah. um, it, it's, it's hard every week to be you know, a little more original, but, right. um, but I still have people come and give me ideas all the time, which is exactly. really helpful. Yes. I ask friends and neighbors and family and coworkers, you know, tell me things you want to know about, and right. that really helps. And, yeah. and of course, seasonality helps too. Um, you know, a few weeks ago we did one on fall vegetables and yeah. you know we've done one on holiday party season right. and party your mass off that's I the think. One. <laughs> you hate to say it even out loud, but party your mass off. That's that was right. great. Folks can go online to MyrtleBeachHerald.com and see all those or they can obviously pull some of those copies they have sitting around their house out and and look back in there uh, to check them out in Section A. Absolutely. I still have a lot of people that say, I read your column every week. I don't do any of the things you tell me to, but I read your <laughs> column. I'm just glad they're reading the column. You know, yes. if it inspires them to do one thing, then we've done something right. That's so. exactly right. I think it says at the end of each column that you are an AF. AA certified mm -hmm. instructor, is that group right? Group fitness instructor okay, group with the American Fitness Association. Okay. 
And, What's uh, the significance about being, of being certified? Well, the difference of being certified is we have to continually update our educational requirements. You know, we, we attend training and um, do about 18 hours every two years of training. Is that so right? So I've, I'm always getting new information, new ideas. They have great support on their website. You know, so you can learn a lot just by just by being um, AFA certified or, you know, any certification is good sure. because it just requires that you learn more and more and more and, mm -hmm. you know, never stop learning because that's when you stop growing. And, um, but we, uh, you know, we've done a lot of fun, interesting things in the fitness world in the last few years with the, you know, the big onset of indoor cycling, which is a great oh, safe way for people that. to bike. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, if you ride a bike in Myrtle Beach outdoors, then you know about outdoor cycling and how scary it can be, especially in the summertime. Right. Indoor cycling is a is a very joint safe way of getting great exercise, but doing it um, without getting run over mm -hmm. and without falling off your bike. You know, those two things are the biggest reason people get hurt when they're outdoors on a bicycle is cars mm -hmm. and and just falling over. Um, you mean a stationary bike? It's basically a stationary bike, but it's done in a classroom format. So you have you know ten or fifteen of your closest friends riding with you, and you have an instructor who's guiding you through a, a guided tour of wherever you happen to be riding that day, whether it's the Alps or whether it's wow. down the coast road. But um, Very nice. So Do you it's have a, a screen lot of fun. there that goes along with it? We don't. Um, yeah. In our in our world, we have to do it all with our imagination, and right. we set it to music, and so it's you know it's you high energy and very exciting. I do. Yeah, it's really one right. of my favorite things. So you're talking things. it through. We're in exactly. the house. We're going exactly. down. Exactly. Wow. And, very you know, nice. Leading and motivating, and, and pulling people up the hills and pushing them down yeah. the hills, and yeah. uh, so that's a lot of fun. That's a that's a great new, well, you know, fairly new within the last three or four years in the right. fitness industry. Boxing classes are getting really big now, where you actually. I think last time you and I talked, we were talking about kickboxing, yes, which is cardio kickboxing, with no That's impact. Why stay back. From every show. <laughs> well, now right. we're now we're doing it with impact, which is uh, even more wow. fun. For those of you who are frustrated fighters, there's a there's a boxing class now where you actually use a bag, a punching bag, and you actually get to impact <laughs> things. And and I found my students really enjoy that. It's a great upper body workout. We right. we kick as well, so lower and upper body, but. Primarily, you know, we don't do enough upper body focus when we're working out, I think. Right. Um, legs are easy to work, but, but, you know, arms and back for women especially. Now, men, they do more arms and back and not enough legs in my opinion, right. but, right. you know, we all have the opposites. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so boxing is a great way to do that and to also maybe not take it out on your family members at home. So. Yeah, yeah, poor David. I mean, yes, <laughs> exactly. good David. Go to the safe. Right. Right. Now, he's right. very happy I'm teaching boxing now. I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure. Where, now, where do you do this, Mary Jo? Do you do, uh, not a plug necessarily for is it uh, it's American Athletic American Club, Athletic Club. And, and That's I the teach one at the Grissom your, uh, Parkway office. location yeah. it is you're able um, to go back and forth South Atlantic Bank absolutely Athletic. five minutes I can They're be back and very forth supportive I'm sure of you moonlighting yeah they are yeah. and um, you know uh, American has three locations now yeah. one in Merle's Inlet one on 544 and one at Grissom Parkway so it's convenient for everybody there is my plug so I will right. give my gym a yeah, little plug no, that is now. that is very convenient but, of course but as an a AFAA certified group and certain you could be anywhere. I could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You just yep. happen to, to be at American Athletic. Exactly. Club. That's um, wonderful. Yeah, I follow the fitness coordinator there, Judy McCracken. Anywhere she goes, I go. So. Very nice. Um, and yeah. of course, the owners are terrific, so that doesn't hurt a bit either. Absolutely. So. But it's a great facility. It's a lot of fun, and the, the you know the people at a gym or at any kind of a group fitness environment really make a difference. If right. you need to be motivated, if you need to. If you don't have a workout buddy, you can always go to a, any place that offers group fitness, and you have 15 or 20 workout buddies, so that's a lot of fun. I, um, yeah, I highly recommend it for people who want to exercise but just can't get motivated enough to, you know, to get out there on their own. Right, so. right. What got you into that, Mary Jo? Is it something in an early age, parents who were very interested in getting you becoming fit, both physically fit as well as being a good strong person. Well, what was it about? Good uh, thing mom and dad don't live in the area because uh, <laughs> they had nothing. Because they had yeah. nothing to do with yeah. it, unfortunately. No, mom and dad, uh, yeah, they, they could use a little more of getting uh -huh. off the couch themselves. Ooh, yeah. But I, yeah, I do love them, but they need, to, yeah. they need to read my column and do what I tell them to. Right. But uh, no, really, um, you know, I didn't get heavily involved in fitness until I was in college. Is that right? Um, I was always kind of outdoorsy into horseback riding and that kind of thing growing right. up. But, but when I graduated from college and went to graduate school joined a gym and just fell in love with it and mm -hmm. that was so it was it was pretty late in life for me right. and, and you know I find that with a lot of people it doesn't matter what age you are um, fitness is something you can start at at 20 you can start it at 
40, you can start it at 70. Is that right? And it Great. will make Good. a difference no matter and what. it will make a difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Now, I'm not saying when you're 70, start training for your first marathon, you right. know, not without medical supervision, but right. I, there are plenty of 80-year-olds that have done marathons, and I've never done that. So, wow. um, But it doesn't matter what age. It just matters that you get out and move and breathe. And so for me, you know, 24, 25 was my age where I started doing group fitness, fell in love with it, did it a lot, and... Uh, and decided that maybe it was something I could really enjoy. I'm a frustrated actress at heart, so Ooh, yeah. so it, it suits all yeah. my performance needs. Ah. I get to get up in front of people and you know make a fool of myself or not, but um, and have a good time and and you know do something good for people in the in the long run. So it's fun. That's great, Mary Jo. And what brought you to Myrtle Beach? How long have you been here? I've been here since 1996. Oh boy! Been on the coast since '91. Um, I was in Shalott. Um, with Bank of America when I first started okay. in my banking career. Right. And uh, they, they trained us in Greenville, North Carolina, which is where I went to college, and, right. and then said, okay, now where do you want to work? Yeah. Well, I had a sailboat, so I wanted to work on the coast. Ooh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so came, from, came to Shalot, and then um, my husband was not my husband then, but came with me, and he's a yacht broker, and so, uh, so he was working in Myrtle Beach. And, yeah. uh, we just ended up down here with Wachovia, and it's been a great fit. I love Myrtle Beach, yeah. love the community, love the people. It's it's home. You've seen a lot of change in the last 11 years than Absolutely. Myrtle Beach in the last uh, seven, 16, 17 years in the Brunswick O'Ree area. Absolutely. We're yeah. growing into a big little city. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, a small town with 13 million visitors every year. Right, right. But, um, yeah, the roads are fabulous. You know, you can get around now, which you couldn't do oh. back when I first got here. Yeah. The shopping is great. You know, the, the so many nice people moving into the area. Right. And so it's, it's just, it's, it's a town that to me has such a sense of soul and just a, a great place to and live. And the banking industry is a good one to be in right now, Mary Jo. I mean, it's a good place to be. Obviously, there have been a lot of anxiety by folks talking about homes and talking about, of course, the, the affluent atmosphere in the Myrtle Beach area. Just on Monday, we had a woman in from the community kitchen, mm -hmm. and she was highlighting a lot of folks, unfortunately, moved to Myrtle thinking about the affluence and then, unfortunately, fall into a trap and become homeless right. and hit a real tough time. And obviously for you, recognizing banking and seeing that affluence, how is it right now? What's it like and where are we headed? Do you have any idea? Well, you know, my, my world is a little bit different because I'm in the commercial banking okay, world. Okay, right. Um, you know, of course we have the residential side too, but the commercial banking world, things are still Very moving simple. along. You Good. know, they're doing well. Good. Um, we still have, you know, we still have a lot of people moving into our area. Um, I'm sure you've had plenty of people in the real estate world talk about the fact that people will move to Florida, but it's too far away for family or, you know, hurricane scares or whatever, and they'll move halfway back between the northeast and the southeast. And so, you know, Myrtle Beach makes a great place for people to park where it's easy to get to. We've got good flights coming in and out now daily. Um, we've got easy driving to get here. So it's, a, you know, it's a pretty central location on the east coast for anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're still seeing that growth. Exchange side of that is, you know, housing prices, if you're anywhere east of Conway, are pretty much going up and up, which makes it hard for our service economy right. folks who, you know, have a hard time living in the community where they work. Right. And, you know, I'm sure that everybody's discussed that. That's a, that can be a tough challenge. But in the banking world, we still have a ton of opportunity here. Good. I don't think we have nearly the the big-time pressures that they have in, in other larger areas of people, you know, coming in not closing on homes and not, you know, or having foreclosures. We haven't seen a lot of that. Right, right, right. Um, so we're still very lucky in that yeah. respect. And, and in the big scheme of things, our taxes are low, our schools are good, and our houses are reasonably priced. So, you know, it's a great place to live. Right, right. And South Atlantic Bank as a new community bank will be focused on the commercial side as well as residential. We'll Absolutely. We're doing both. We have, we have full service banking. Anything good. a big bank can do, we can do. Right, So yeah. um, So we have it all mortgage. We have in-house already ready to go. We have our consumer lending and deposit function and then our commercial lending and deposit function, all the treasury services, anything anybody could want from a bank. We a can very do. exciting bunch and, of course, working with Scott Plyler and Wayne Wicker, two gentlemen you know very well, Absolutely. particularly Scott there, and uh, obviously the dedicated board that, is, uh, that has been here in the community a heck of a long time, a very diverse group really committed to the area and uh, reinvesting back here very well. And you all are oversubscribed on the fundraise as well, which we is did. exciting. 
it's always nice to try to raise a lot of money in that instance and raise and a lot And end up raising more. more. And we yeah. still had people calling on the last day saying, wait for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. And so, you know, hopefully they'll have an opportunity down the road. Um, yeah. But we really, you know, we are so fortunate because our directors are yeah. unbelievable Cracker supporters Jack. of the community. Yeah. You know, people who, who give and give and give, who, right. you know, understand what it's like to own a business and run right. a business in this community and be responsible for their corporate family. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they're helping us be responsible for our corporate family. Right. And right. so that's, you know, I mean, it's servant leadership in this community. And, and we all do, a, I think, a really good job on the corporate side of, of supporting our community and and South Atlantic wants to be no exception to that either, That's both great. from a product standpoint and a you know who we're going to be in the community. So, well, so often, times folks know you, uh, Mary Jo, either from being in one of your classes, or of course knowing you from your column in the Herald, or knowing you from your dedicated service to Optimus Club and a multitude of other charities. I think right now on the sponsorship committee for the Heart Ball, the Heart Ball exactly. coming up in mid to late February, which is very exciting. They've got some great sponsors for that, event, including the Market Common, yes. right out here on the airbase, which is exciting. But of course, if, for folks who want to learn about just commercial lending, some of the basics there, what are some things that folks need to think about if they're approaching a banker for a loan? I know our focus is on feeling fit and looking fabulous, but we got a few minutes. What are some of the things that a small, someone who wants to get into business or someone who's already operating wants to expand, what are some of the basic things they need to be thinking about before they go in to see a banker like yourself? Well, I think, you know, one common uh, misconception maybe that a lot of people who are starting a business have is that you go to a bank, borrow money, have a good idea and start a business. Right. Um, you know, you're a business owner so you know that, that truthfully that's not the way the world works. The world works is you save, you have some working capital, borrow from friends or family, you know, put together a good business plan, um, get your operation up and running and so that your idea is moving a little bit. And I'm not saying you need to be a Fortune 500 company by any stretch of the imagination, but you have to put a little bit of yourself into it and a little bit of your resources into it. And then you come to the bank for expansion capital for, you know, whatever it takes from that point on. That, I think that's the, we have a lot of people that will come in our door and say, I have a great idea for a business and I need to borrow money. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and it's just like buying a house. Anybody that buys a house and wants 100% or more financing, Again, that kind of tells you where the mortgage industry went and got in trouble and is backing down from. And the, the commercial banking industry is no different. Yeah. We want you to have a piece of your soul in it with my soul right, because right. I'm going to be invested in you and I want you to believe oh, in yeah. you as well. That's um, so that's an interesting challenge. Now, you know, the Small Business Administration does a great job of helping they people yeah. um, get those ideas to fruition and, you know, helping with that startup working capital and helping with the business plans. And there's a ton of resources on SBA.gov right. for those types of startup businesses. Right. On, you know, a business that's been in existence for a while and is ready to take the next step. It's just a matter of bringing financial information and sitting down and being able to kind of illuminate your vision and tell people, you know, this is what I want to do, this is how I'm going to get there. And just have a good plan either in your head or on paper. So. That's very important for mm -hmm. viewers to hear. And, of course, it's tough to hear, as you say, that Absolutely. stark uh, reality when they come in with a great idea. But the great thing is groups like the Small Business Administration are supportive of banks coming in later. Absolutely. They want to help you get started so that a conventional bank, a mm -hmm. community bank, or a big bank can step in to help out to, to carry you to the next level. Absolutely. So it's very important, as you say, to send folks to sba.gov or other uh, similar sites so they can try to get mm -hmm. their idea down, down the road a little further. Exactly. That's wonderful. In the same way, oftentimes you highlighted putting together a column, you've got to, uh, there's a lot of steps that have to take before you can actually begin typing, either a friend giving you a great idea exactly. or something in the class as you're cruising down the Alps uh, there in the classroom, <laughs> riding your bike uh, in Paris or the Champs-Élysées or somewhere. I mean, Those cobblestone were, streets can be a killer. I bet they can. I can't imagine. How do you cushion for that? I, mean, I don't know how you do it. Padded bike shorts. That's right. That's right. But uh, obviously doing a column, I mean, to come up with those ideas, you've got to really think through a good bit to make sure we you connect and you don't sound like you're all over the place along with the 20 or 15 other folks that are writing every week in the Herald. You've got to really get your focus there. Absolutely. You know, life is about having a plan. Right. It's about having a plan with your fitness. It's about having a plan with your column or with your work or with your business. And, right. and you know, the key there is to, to sit down and give things a little bit of thought before you just jump into them. You know, with your fitness plan, if you don't 
have a direction of where I want to go, you know, what's my goal going to be, is it realistic, can I accomplish it? You know, I think the biggest thing people do is they, they start a fitness plan, they say, I'm going to lose 40 pounds. Well, you know, your body may only want to lose 10 pounds and you may look great. Right. So you need to, you know, kind of set goals that are realistic, set your plan that's realistic. I try and do that, you know, writing the column or whatever I'm doing. You know, if I'm writing a column, I don't write six in one week. I write, right. you know, one a week or two a week to try and, you know, keep my ideas fresh, keep things going, and, and make sure, you know, there might be the next great idea out there. Right. And I keep a file folder of all the things I've got, ideas that, that might turn into a column later mm -hmm. on. Great. Good Same time. with fitness. You, you know, if I'm teaching a class, think about moves that you want to use or ideas that you want to have and, and, you know, where could you fit that in and then practice it think through it, you know, so that when it comes to the real time that you've got, you know, you've got something that's cohesive and makes sense and flows. Life is that way. Life needs yeah. to be cohesive and flow. And so if you can't, um, you know, if you can't find a way to get there, get a coach that'll help you like the SBA or a fitness, a fitness instructor or, you know, a business consultant. There's plenty of ways out there to, to get people to help you with that kind of thing. Very good point, Mary Jo. And of course, for you, any favorite columns over the last three years as you think through? You've got so many practical ones. Any ones where someone said, I not only read it, but I actually took it to heart, where you were hearing that on a regular basis. You highlighted that folks will read it. They may not do it. Of course, if folks uh, know me, or, uh, it's a great thing. As you think about just here, we could be doing some exercises. Exactly. Whether, or if we were using our arms and propping up. There's so many practical tips that you've given in your columns that people may not even remind you that they're doing or, or tell you that they're actually doing. Is there any one or couple that, uh, that they not only read but really acted upon? Well, I'll tell you the one that, that really hit home the most for me. And that, you know, I mean, I know that the Herald has a ton of readers because I hear from them all the time. Mm. Uh, but, you know, the, I had a good friend who lost a child. Mm. And uh, the column's name is Three Men and a Dog. Mm. And uh, he and two guys had been walking the neighborhood. Um, I live on a circle, and they'd been walking the neighborhood every morning. And I, he was doing so great. And, you know, when something like that happens, the first thing that you think is, this is going to derail his entire world, right. you know. I mean, this is a special person, and I, I you know, I knew this child and, and, you know, very well known in the community. And I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, all, these, all this hard work, you know, where is it going to go? Well, about two days after all the people had left and all the family was gone and, you know, things were quiet in the neighborhood, there were three guys and two dogs out there walking, or t three guys and a dog, I think. Um, that day, they were out walking again, and I, you know, it just it struck my he was heart. One of the three. And he was one of the yeah, three. Yeah. His friends picked him up, took him out, and and you know said, no, we're gonna we're gonna go do this. We're gonna do this every day. We're gonna support you. We're gonna be with you. Then the next day, there were four guys and two dogs, and they've been walking every day ever since. I see him every morning, and just the fact that people in this community will pick you up in the worst time of your life and we'll take you to that next place and we'll get you there healthy in your mind, healthy in your heart, healthy in your body. I mean, that says everything about yeah. Myrtle Beach. And yeah. that's probably, was probably the column I heard the most from people, but also the one that was the easiest to write because it was just such an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. You know, so on the serious side, that's probably uh, my favorite column that I've written. Mm -hmm. On the fun side, there's, you know, there's all kinds of fitness myths and and things like that. Um, well, what's the biggest fitness uh, myth you hear, Mary Jo? Is there one, or are there just so many? That, but what's one that sticks out of your mind? Let me think about that. Oh, that you'll that you'll turn out to look like a bodybuilder if you lift weights. Oh, won't I? Uh, won't not I? unless you stop eating anything except protein and, I won't, yeah, and lift yeah. weights four or five hours a day. Oh, is that all? <laughs> Sorry, I hate to break it to you, and all oh, the fellas no. out there are going to be yeah. very sad to hear yeah, this. They are. All the right. women are Something going on a Friday Whoo! morning. Yeah, you yeah. know, even if you tend to build muscle pretty easily, you are not going to look like a bodybuilder unless you act like a bodybuilder, which yeah. means you have to really be very focused, very targeted, right. and do nothing but focus on, on muscle building. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, the other thing is is that you can be fit and just lift weights, and that's also a myth, because if you don't do some cardio fitness for your heart and your lungs and do some muscle mass building, you're not going to have overall fitness. You need to train everything, and you need to not do the same thing over and over and over again right. because your body gets used to it, and then it doesn't build, it doesn't change. Oh, yeah. So. Some of those guys, Mary Jo, on these magazine covers, the guys and gals, or particularly the guys, they just look inhuman. They do, and With it's a full-time job. You and, can't uh, get like that. Wearing the little that. thongs. I mean, these guys, 
looks like you could just touch them and uh, pain, I mean, you know, like pop them or something. And exactly, balloons. exactly. That's real, though. Have you ever seen these guys or gotten near them up close or even the women like that? Um, I have seen some folks that are not quite, you know, the Olympic training right. bodybuilders. Right. Um, you know, and it's, I mean, it is truly a sport. Yeah. And it is something that they do full time. It's yeah. not something that you and I are going to get to unless we aspire to it. Right. Now, you know, overall fitness and being, being, you know, ripped so to say you know where right. you've got you know a lot of striations and that yeah. you can do and look really nice and you know without being you know blown up or too big <laughs> you know and again i guess it's all personal preference i'm yeah, sure they sure. look terrific Absolutely. to the judges and to you know to their fellow competitors not but to take anything away from them. exactly right. but sure. you know for me it's just a personal choice not to yeah. not to be quite that focused because you know life is about balance i think we all have to have some balance and if, if your world is, revolves around too much working out, th there is such a thing as too much exercise, right. Right. there's such a thing as too much eating, there's such a thing as not enough of any of that. So, you know, you have to balance um, work life, you have to balance workout life, you have yeah. to balance family and, and personal time. I love it, Mary Jo. Those are great words. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. I'm Thank sorry you, we've Greg. run out of time. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Senior Vice President of South Atlantic Bank and AFAA Certified Group Instructor, Mary Jo Rogers, coming up next. I loved Mary Jo sharing that off camera. Her favorite title, one of her favorite titles, 15 Ways to Leave Your Blubber. What a great title, feeling fit, looking fabulous. You heard her talk about it. More than 150 of these that she's typed up and fired into our copy editor to get into the Herald every week. And of course, the excitement of seeing what Mary Jo has done for so many groups in writing this column. You know, not only getting people to get physically fit, feeling fit, looking fabulous, but also the commitment she's made. Instead of taking money and putting it in her own po pocket for doing that column, every quarter she takes all those dollars that she's generated from writing the column and donates them to different charities in town. Every quarter, a different group. I won't even tell you the names of all the amazing groups, but there's so many folks that have benefited by her actually writing this column, not only from feeling fit and looking fabulous, looking better and partying their masses off, but also the excitement of making a difference uh, every day. Mary Jo Rogers, check her out online at MyrtleBeachHerald.com. Stop by to see her at South Atlantic Bank. Pick up some donuts there if you want to pop on by on 21st Avenue, the corner of 21st and Grissom, or pop on by to see her at American Athletic Club. Mary Jo Rogers, feeling fit and looking fabulous. Thank you.